Hey, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. So glad to be with you today. Do you know that we have a country slap full of churches? We have a world full of churches. Avacana has got a church. Every There is religion everywhere. Religion is everywhere. But true Christianity that bringeth forth hope, where is it? Where is the church today full of the Holy Ghost? Where is the church today where the people are full of the Holy Spirit and they're sending out? We have, uh, we got churches uh, today, we got a country full of churches. Uh, the churches are full of preachers that have um, literary sense. They have been colleged. They have degrees. They get paid according to their degrees. If the it's a bigger church and they have more degrees they get uh, much more pay and so therefore uh, it boils down to something completely different than ministry of hope ministry of hope uh, we've got grand music we've got choirs we've got organs pianos guitars uh, small bands in the churches today we've got uh, the the uh, uh, annoying drum set that comes up today sometimes and sometimes it's good and sometimes it isn't and uh, uh, we've got all this music all these machines uh, if, if all of this that we have today that we're portraying as spirituality as religion when it fails what do we have when it fails what do we have uh, we try to hire good workers we try to hire eager people. We try to hire this and that. You can't hire a good worker. You can't hire an eager person. You can't hire uh, an earnest person. They either are or they aren't. If they're eager and they come and they work for you, then you have an eager person. But if you hire a person and he's not eager when he comes, he's not going to be eager when he leaves. <laughs> More than likely. Ah. Uh, We've got churches that everywhere that are laboring hour by hour, feeding the poor, feeding the hungry, uh, doing this, doing that, uh, running here, running there, going off on pleasure trips uh, and uh, doing things. Rather than going to spiritual things, they're going off to, to places that actually uh, uh, demean the Bible, demean God, and they're going to visit those places, water parks and uh, anywhere where pleasurable and, and the average Christian today that goes off on a bus on a week's tour doesn't carry tracks with them. Don't even take their Bible with them. I mean, they're Christians. Supposedly. They don't carry their Bible. They don't do this. They don't do that. Where, where is God today? Have we put Him on the shelf? Is He second best to us? Is everything we do uh, only the only time we come to God is when we're in need. He's like a doctor, and we, we run to Him when we have a problem. I got news for you. If you're not in communion with Him now, you probably ain't gonna be able to get in communion with Him when you got problems. So you better stay in communion now. Ah, we got people laboring in churches today everywhere, just laboring, 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 drawing salaries and pay, and nothing spiritual going on. Man, where is brotherly love? Real, true brotherly love. Are we just helping people? Just helping people? We, there are people that will give, give uh, all kinds of money and stuff to help people, but they themselves won't step out and be the brother. Where is God's power in the church today? Is it the last thing you find in the church today? The power of God? Uh, where is the you and I people refining themselves in the Word of God? Starting in Genesis 1.1 In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Why are we not telling that to our students today that are going to school believing in the Big Bang? And then going all the way through to believe that man came from monkey. Why, why are we not 
telling that to our children what's happening we know we're going to have a generation that know not Jesus we are in the time right now when we have a generation that don't know Jesus we had camp last week we had 25 young people get saved in that camp I took Bible verses to boys that were 10, 11, 13 years old that had never heard the gospel, never heard Jesus, never read a Bible verse. I'm talking about in America today. Wow. We want the very best in the church so that we look like we're, quote, quote, something. Wow, wow, we're the first church. We are something. We are the, the biggest church in this area. We are doing the best in this area. But, what is the best that you're doing? Are you educating people in the Bible? Are you winning souls? Are you doing uh, that? Uh, your plans and your schemes and everything that are so perfect? Do they uh, involve winning people to the Lord? Putting people in the Bible? Putting them studying? Giving them that word hope. Oh, I know so many people today in churches. I meet them every day. I say, where do you go to church? Different people tell me where they go to church. And I can see that demeanor in them. Where that church they're going to, they're not getting anything spiritually. They have no hope. They're in this church and they go, where's the hope? It's not being preached. It's not being taught. Yeah, they got some church with the best talent in them. Man, they can sing up a storm. They can fill a building with people singing and praising and everything. But when they leave, they don't carry their Bibles. They don't get in their Bible. They don't study their Bible. They don't preach their Bible. They don't teach their Bible. So therefore, they have no hope. If their hope is in a day of singing, boy, that's a terrible hope because when that singing's gone, what are you going to do? You better have your hope in the uttermost person, God. And you better try your uttermost to learn the Bible and to get there. What do we need today in America? We need a revival of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. We need a revival in God's churches that have a church that doesn't deny the power of God. I'm believing we have churches today all over the United States of America that deny the power of God, that couldn't pray a prayer. The whole church unit in some churches we have today couldn't pray a prayer that would get answered on the doorstep if it had to. Wow. That's a terrible analysis of the church today. Let's look at hope. Hope is a word tossed around today. Faith and love and hope are the things that God talked about as being real. But in today's world, when they use the word hope, they say, I hope I win the lottery. I'm going down and put $5 on a ticket. I hope I win the lottery. That is an evil hope. That is not a godly hope. The godly hope is hoping in what is real. And what is, uh, what is real comes from the eternal book, from the Holy Bible. And that hope is the hope we need. You know that we can live we could live a long time without food, several weeks. As a matter of fact, some in the Bible went 40 days and even uh, Moses had to do a double duty 40 day thing and went 80 days. Um, we could live uh, a few days without water. Uh, we can live a few minutes without oxygen. But without hope, we die. Oh, we physically living, but we're dead in the water spiritually without hope. Hope is the thing. We can say in Psalm 7 and 15, To God, Thou art my hope. If you hope in God, 
<laughs> you're hoping in the eternal. If you hope in God, you're hoping in everything you need to hope in. In Romans 5.5, 5, hope does not disappoint. Real hope does not disappoint. Hope in God. God does not disappoint. God is the true everlasting hope. We can rejoice when we have hope. We can rejoice from the inward man, from the heart. We can rejoice. And we, we follow a God of hope, a God that gave us hope, and the hope that is true. And as we go through our days, the Bible says we can plow in hope that the seed that we plant will come up and will be watered and we will see fruit. That's what we're supposed to fruit. Now abide in faith, hope, and charity, love. If, if we plant that love and hope in that seed, we will see a righteousness from it. And that's the hope of righteousness. Galatians 5.5 5 says, hope in righteousness. The seeds of righteousness will bring forth fruit for the kingdom of God. Hey, in Titus he said, we hope for eternal life. And in Thessalonians says, we hope in our salvation. Wow. Wow. Ah, in Peter it says, we are in a living hope. That's not a dead hope. That's a living hope. That's not like the hope of the earth. That's a hope in God. A living hope. Hope that is in you. Wow. Jesus in me is the hope of my eternal life and is the fact that that hope is real and it is eternal life. Well, we were doing a 10-minute excerpt here, and we're at 12 minutes, and, and 10 seconds is going to be at 13 minutes before we get done if we're not careful. So we're going to go now, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.